How can one stay sane? Well, based, mainly the first thing that you have to do is recognize when it is getting to you. Because yes, it is a lot of things happening around us. And it's up to us how we can respond to it. So if you're getting overstressed, you stop and you admit it. God, I know you said, don't be anxious, but I'm anxious. And so God, I just need for you to take over. Good evening, everyone. Happy Tuesday. We have an awesome guest who's waiting to speak with us. So let's get started. Sunday is Mother's Day. This is a special time of the year when we can go above and beyond to celebrate and show our gratitude for the years of love, nurturing, and sacrifice that our mothers have shown from the very beginning. So I would like to extend a huge happy early Mother's Day to every single mother, mother figure, adoptive mother, and surrogate mother. I would also like to take the time to remember the lives of all the wonderful mothers who have passed away. May their legacies live on forever. Mother's Day is even more special this year because our First Lady, Mrs. Audrey Marie Cosby, my favorite mother in the world, is celebrating her birthday this Sunday, May 9th. We are extremely grateful for her life and the many ways that she has poured into the lives of those with whom she has come in contact. Happy early birthday. High school seniors, you still have time to apply for the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church Educational Grant. The deadline is Friday, May 28th at 5 o'clock p.m. All applicants are required to attend one of the virtual mandatory courses in order to be eligible. For the full list of eligibility requirements, visit the events page on our website. And if you would like any additional information, please contact Reverend Richard Boone IV, our Minister to Youth and College Students at rboone at wheelerbc.org. Last month, we dove into some serious and informative conversations about our health as it relates to infertility and HIV. In those discussions, we heard from both of the amazing ministry leaders in both the Waiting Room Infertility Ministry and the HIV Support and Awareness Ministry. This month is National Mental Health Awareness Month. While some may get uncomfortable, topics like these are extremely important to discuss because so many individuals are suffering in silence and making their situations worse. The National Alliance on Mental Illness began their You Are Not Alone campaign last year in an effort to spread a message of unity when social distancing made it difficult to feel connected to our loved ones. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, mental health conditions are disproportionately affecting young adults, black and Hispanic persons, essential workers, unpaid caregivers for adults, and those receiving treatments for pre-existing psychiatric conditions. The CDC also reported that symptoms of anxiety and depressive order increased considerably in the United States between April and June of last year, compared with the same period in 2019. To assess mental health, substance abuse, and suicidal ideation during the pandemic, representative panel surveys were conducted among adults across the United States in June of 2020. Overall, 40% of respondents reported at least one adverse mental or behavioral health condition, including symptoms of anxiety or depressive disorder, symptoms of trauma, and a stressor-related disorder related to the pandemic, and having started or increased substance use to cope with stress or emotions related to COVID-19. The percentage of respondents who reported having seriously considered suicide in the 30 days before completing the survey was significantly higher among respondents between the ages of 18 and 24. If you have been following us on social media, you may have seen our Mental Health Mondays hosted by Reverend Dr. Barbara Williams, the Minister of Christian Counseling here at Wheeler Avenue. In those powerful moments, 
we have been able to hear the transparent testimonies and wisdom of people in our church who have gone through some difficult times and came out stronger on the other side. We have also heard from people who may still be hurting, but are building their trust in God each day. Dr. Barbara is joining us this evening to speak about mental health issues and how we can heal from the traumas that we have been experiencing. Thanks for joining us on The Avenue, Dr. Williams. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much for inviting me. Of course. Now, I ask almost all of our guests that question, and it's something that people ask and answer all of the time without really thinking about it or stopping to listen to the answer. And it's easy for us to say, I'm fine, but how many times has someone really been honest with you about how they were feeling, or how many times have you actually been honest with people about what you were feeling? Well, in my... Uh and the opportunity that I have as counselor, most of the time people tell me how they're feeling for <laughs> real. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I didn't ask that question. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're in our second year of social distancing, and for many people, they are not fine. We are not fine. Um, we've had so much grief in this season. We've mourned the loss of the ways that things used to be. Um, some have lost close friends loved ones, homes, jobs, and even the people that we don't know, like the countless brothers and sisters we've lost to police brutality, mass shootings. Um, it's a lot. So, and it's on top of all of the trauma that we've already had throughout our lifetime. How can one stay sane when there's seemingly no end in sight? How can one stay sane? Well, based Mainly, the first thing that you have to do is recognize when it is getting to you. Because yes, it is a lot of things happening around us, and it's up to us how we can respond to it. Because there's always uh, trouble. Mm -hmm. In this world, you will always have trouble. So the first thing is to recognize that it's getting to you. And how do you know that it's getting to you? You will start to snap at each other, uh, especially now that you are in close quarters and you're isolated and you can't go out as much. You will find yourself snapping at each other. You will find um, that you will be anxious, uh, that you might be afraid to go places or to do anything. Mm -hmm. You might have some fears about catching the COVID, um, being um, isolated. So, and you will have some mind problems, challenges, you will have some body challenges, and you will have some spirit. You might find yourself crying a lot, or not sleeping well, uh, eating too much, uh, not enough. So you have to notice when the things are getting to you, when the stress is getting to you. Well, for those who have noticed, some people decide to mask those issues that they're dealing with, with maybe alcohol or drugs or other, um, other quick fixes. So what are the dangers of doing that? Oh, the dangers of using drugs and alcohol is that it will kill you. Mm -hmm. It will take away your friends and your family, and it will ultimately kill you physically. So when you recognize or that you are using drugs or alcohol to deal with the stress, most of the time it's our friends or our families that help us to recognize that it's too much. And so when you start to recognize that you are using, uh, even drinking excessively, then that is the time to get some help for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you started Mental Health Mondays about a year ago um, in response to the pandemic. Tell us how that got started. When did, when did the Lord give you that idea? Well, we had, because we had to do the virtual learning, I'm, I'm sorry, the virtual worshiping, and the virtual counseling even. We have to do all our counseling now virtually. We started to think about what else can we do to help our members, our family, and our friends to deal with, with the pandemic. And Pastor 
thought of agree to. Uh, I thought of the mental health moment and Pastor thought it was a great idea. So that's basically how he got started to help people to deal with uh, not only the pandemic, but the results of it, especially the isolation. When you can't be with your friends, when you can't socialize, when you can't go out to the movies or go out to eat or do things, then you do get some, you get depressed. Mm -hmm. And so we thought the mental health moment, we would bring experts and other people on to tell their stories or how they're dealing with it. And we thought that might be helpful. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's great because so many people still um, are not comfortable with exactly. going to the one-on-one -on -one, um, counseling sessions or even admitting that that's something that they need. Exactly. So I think having that as an option is fabulous. Um, in one of the sessions, Dr. Rita Walker, she introduced the term psychological fortitude. Mm -hmm. And she talked about ways that we can cut ourselves some slack and um, about finding ways to cut ourselves slack. And she also mentioned taking time to allow ourselves to grieve. All of this sounded great, but it's way easier said than done. So what are some tips on how we can cut ourselves slack and allow ourselves to grieve? First is just acknowledging that it is getting to you mm -hmm. and that even though you are Christian and a child of the king, it is okay. And so once you recognize that, then is when your power can come in where you can, you, I always suggest to stop and take the time to have a little talk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting overstressed, you stop and you admit it. God, I know you said, don't be anxious, but I'm anxious. And so God, I just need for you to take over. Have that talk with Jesus. And then the other thing you do is fortify yourself. Faith comes by hearing. Listen extra to sermons. Listen extra, play your music, play your gospels, sing, do whatever you can do to stay connected to God. Get up early in the morning and spend time in prayer and meditation and before you go to bed, but pray all during the day. The main thing we need to do now is to recognize that yes, trouble is all around us and things are rough, but God is still in control. And so it is our responsibility to stay connected uh, even more so. Do we need to fast and pray? Uh, Jesus said some things take fasting and praying. These are the times when fasting and praying really comes in. So if you feel yourself getting anxious, if you're so scared that you're not able to even perform your normal uh, duties, responsibilities, function normally, then it is extra prayer time. Mm -hmm. And we have that power for us. Uh, we have that tool available to us. And so we need to use that. Uh, and then take walks, go riding in the country, go walking on the beach, just Come out of your house sunset and look at the sun and the stars uh, at night and the moon. Appreciate God's world. It's not all bad. Yeah. If we stay in our homes and we hear the news, we will begin to think it's all bad, but it's not. Mm -hmm. God still has a beautiful world. And again, he's still in control. So as long as we keep our focus and, and don't get overwhelmed with that. And the other thing is, ask God, what is my part? See, I can't fix everything. I can't fix the trial going on. If I could, I would. Yeah. But I know how to pray, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we have to determine, what can I do? Mm -hmm. What can I do about what is going on? And then... Begin to do that. And if you don't know, ask God, God, what is my part? We don't want to get off into his part. But what can I do about what is going on? And then follow that. You know, talk to God enough so that you can listen also. You talk and then shut up and listen. Mm -hmm. 
for his guidance and for his direction. And he will let you know what you can do and what you can't do. Oh, I'm sorry. I like, no, that was good. <laughs> I like that you mentioned going outside and taking a break from the news because, you know, I'm one, I, I used to watch all the scary movies and, you know, it never bothered me, but being on social media, start well, really it started for me with the George Floyd. I still have not been able to watch that video. And just now we have access to literally seeing people die on um, social media. And it's really scarier than any movie anybody could exactly. create. Um, so I think that's really important to take those breaks from the news, from social media. It's important to be informed, but you have to just, like they say, go and smell the roses, you know? Mm -hmm. um, literally mm -hmm. do that, because mm -hmm. it, it will make a difference. And even what you said about waking up early, um, Someone told me a long time ago that, what did, what did they say? They said, listening to some, whatever the first song you hear in the morning, that kind of like sticks with you throughout your day. And sometimes that is true for me. Like I'll get up and I'll listen to maybe some gospel um, and those songs will just replay throughout. And it really does help to you know, get a jump start on your day and just feel good going into whatever the rest of the day Exactly. Has for you. Mm -hmm. um, Why do you think Jesus started his day like that? Right. You know, it tells us that he went out early in the morning, Mark 1, 35. He went out early in the morning and he started his day. That's for us. That's a model for us. Mm -hmm. Start your day with God. Yeah. And then he's with you all of the day. And just remind yourself, okay, God, you're in control. It really Amen. makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, in, a joint, in, a, in addition to it being mental health, National Mental Health Awareness Month um, this month, it's also Family Wellness Month and World Laughter Day was this past Sunday. And in the same session that I mentioned earlier with Dr. Walker, you told us, stop looking at what we can't do and get creative with what we can do. It's still a celebration. And that stuck with me because we've literally had to do that um, during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. I love to see all of the different ways that people have gotten creative with birthdays and drive-bys and Zoom exactly. parties. So what are some of the ways that you and your multi-generational family <laughs> have been creative during this season? <laughs> oh my goodness, thank you. Because <laughs> uh, by the time this is played, we, we will have all had birthdays. Yes. Um, we have done the parades. We've done the birthday parades. I had a surprise birthday parade, and it was awesome. I had more fun. And just getting together and eating and talking and playing games and mm, going to the beach and spending time in the country. Uh, I am from a small town called Lockhart, Texas, so that's a country, okay? So we spend time uh, just going to the country and going to the beach and having family dinners and um, the parade parties and let's see what else. Mm, yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of us are still talking about returning to normal whenever that will be. Um, is it possible or even healthy to return to what normal was, or do we have to reimagine what normal will look like? I think we have to reimagine, but I think we've learned some things. See, that's the good thing about God. Even during this pandemic, some good things came out of it. Mm -hmm. And so those good things that we've learned, I learned Zoom. <laughs> oh, that was another thing too. We had a Zoom birthday party for my 101-year-old mother. Oh, wow. That was awesome. Yeah. I've learned Zoom. I've learned to do FaceTime more often. I never would have agreed to do counseling um, on Zoom mm -hmm. or virtually. I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, but some of the things that we have learned have been a blessing, and I think we need to incorporate those. So I think we'll have a new normal. Nice. I don't think it'll ever be like it was, and that's okay, because some of the things that we have learned to do, we can incorporate into some of the things that we used to do, and we can come up with a, a better product, you know? Because mm -hmm. now we already, Wheeler has members everywhere. So now we know uh, we can get 
um, connect, stay connected to them mm -hmm. even better now. And they won't feel disconnected at all. And so I think some of the things that we've learned during this pandemic, um, yeah, I think it'll be a new normal. I don't think it'll ever be back the same. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to the new normal. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing all this wonderful information. With oh, us. okay. Oh, it was, it was wonderful. I enjoyed it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I pray that something I said was beneficial. Absolutely. I believe it was. Okay. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the ministry of Reverend Dr. Barbara Williams. That was incredible. If you or someone you know is struggling in the area of mental health, please know that there are resources available to get you to a healthy space. You can always make an appointment with Dr. Williams by sending an email to bwilliams at wheelerbc.org. Additionally, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration has a 24-hour confidential hotline for individuals and family members facing mental and or substance use disorders. 1-800-662-HELP. You are not alone. Thank you for tuning in this evening. It is my prayer that something that was said here tonight has helped somebody. Until next time, although we can't be together physically, you're still on the avenue.